The only teams that have won in North America, C9 and TSM. We set a high standard for ourselves when we first came into the LCS. Dominated that season, went 25-3. Next season comes, we still dominate, we go 24-4. and The legacy that we set up for ourselves is just a high standard of destroying the scene. If we can't keep doing that, then our legacy will die. Cloud9 gonna end the series 3-0. The best team in North America. TSM goes the full five and takes down Cloud9. Winning the trophy has always been TSM's legacy. It's currently TSM's, and I really don't want them to keep it, you know? We're always going for Worlds, so this is just a stepping stone for us. No one really cares about second place, but I don't remember who took second. I know who took first, but you have to go for first, and you have to take first. We're not number one, we're last. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the North American League Championship Series. We're coming to you live from the fan zone outside the studios here in Los Angeles, California. Here are our defending champions, Team Solo Mid, making their way into the studio a short time ago. And we've got some devout fans showing their support. Here's one wearing his pride on his face. TSM will be facing off against Cloud9 who are taken in the fan zone on their way inside. Now they've got a throng of fans here as well, and the energy in the crowd is palpable as you can hear. And well, ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to this. After four months and over 100 games, two teams are left standing and will take to the rift to battle for the title of champions. Hello everyone, I'm James Dash Patterson, and joining me on the analyst desk today in the fan zone, our Aiden Zyrene Moon and David Freak Trilly. Guys, there is so much energy out here right now. How pumped are you for this series? Man, this is awesome being outside. <laughs> we need to do this more often. I though. know, right? We get some sunshine. We've got beautiful fans out here supporting their teams. What could be better for a day of League of Legends? Well, let's get started. And to track how these teams got here, we're going to pull up the playoff bracket. Cloud9 successfully fought back from a two-game deficit in the semifinals to defeat Team Liquid. For Team Solo Mid, they were able to fend off Team Impulse 3-1 and lock in their fifth consecutive finals appearance. In addition to honor and glory, both of these teams are going to be looking to grab themselves 90 championship points that they will carry with them into the summer split. The extra 20 points will be a big advantage as teams battle for a spot at Worlds, and it could mean the difference between booking a trip to compete on the international stage or watching from home. Now, today's finals is the latest and growing rivalry between Team Solo Mid and Cloud9. It's one that the fans enjoy watching, and once again, it will dictate who's the top dog in the NALCS. Yeah, and Cloud9, they've had a rough season, and their playoffs haven't been that smooth either. They're really re relying on their leadership and their ability to bounce back, as well as their individual skill. If you look at the Cloud9 roster, they're not a one-dimensional team. Everybody on that roster has carry potential. We've seen Sneaky Bin the Rock. We've seen Lemonation invade and completely tilt the game. Meteos on top of his game. High can run away with it too. And then Ball's in the top lane. He can just utterly destroy an enemy team. Yeah, rough by C9 standards. We have to remember that they're still the second seed going into playoffs, yeah. but for, for all intents and purposes, Cloud9 generally expects to do a bit better. Yeah, Cloud9 expects to do pretty well here, and I think the one player to watch for, because I think his performance can be incredibly varied here, is Balls in the top lane. In the semifinals, they first picked him Hecarim on every single blue side games, game one, three, and five, and seeing Balls on aggressive top laners like this is really big for C9. The rotational game is very smart. We've seen them play so many games from behind where like high split pushes and they like hold on for a really long time. An open map is what C9 thrives off of. And allowing Balls to be a person to create an open map is a really big point for them. And that's the first time we've seen him in the competitive environment on Hecarim. Right. And having a performance like that right out of the gate is really strong for C9 and shows that their practice is definitely worth the time. And then on the flip side, someone that has been having a big impact for Team Solomid is their newest member, Santorin. This is Santorin's first split in the LCS. And it Right out of the gate at IEM San Jose, he choked a little bit. But since then, we've seen him grow to be the rookie of the split because he was on the international stage, IEM Katowice, world stage there. Did an amazing job, and he's versatile. He plays carry junglers. He plays tank junglers, and he's actually 
ahead of the curve. He know, normally can figure out what's good before people are playing it and pick it up and be adept at it. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I want to watch Santorin especially to see where he goes, not only what he's playing. Because TSM, I know we talk about Bjergsen a whole lot, but Wild Turtle this split has been to me, the most impressive player. He's the most improved, I think, out of TSM. He's been incredibly impressive for the team overall. To me, he's the number 280 carry in NA behind Sneaky here. And Wild Turtle's making a name for himself here. He's the other big carry for Solomid. And if he gets ahead, as opposed to Bjergsen getting ahead, they can use him to carry the game as well. So I want to see if Santorin, you know, who he chooses to camp for, and also where the carries go for TSM. Now, what's so interesting for me about this matchup is the fact that there are so many players on each team that can be the reason why either team wins. And that includes and extends so far as their coaches. So to give us an ins insider's perspective on this match, we're going to send it over to Riv, who's joined by the coaches of our two combatants.